Hi, my name is Adrian Reed. I'm here at the BA Conference Europe uh, 2019. I'm really pleased that I've managed to call uh, Steve Whitler for a quick uh, conversation. So, uh, Steve, uh, Steve works for, uh, well, founded, I think, Visual, Visual Media, yeah, is that correct? That's right, yeah. And uh, one of the passions that we both share, or enthusiasms we share, is about uh, visualization and about helping stakeholders to uh, reconcile their perspectives so they've got a sort of common view of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tricky subject. How do you go, how do you even begin to go about <laughs> doing that with the clients that you work with, Steve? <laughs> yeah, and often the projects that we're working on are so complex. Um, yeah, where do you start? And the, <clears throat> the answer is we always start with the same place, which is the experience of the people that we're talking to. So we have a whole series of techniques for how we tap into what it means to people for, um, in the words that they're using. Because very often, you know, business analysis, enterprise architecture, the disciplines that are dealing with business complexity, the words that they use mean all sorts of different things to different people. You know, I was just in a session there where we are talking about capabilities and what is a capability. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, we just, we draw it up on a board just as a word, well, how do we know that that means the same thing yeah. to me as it means to you? Maybe if we drew a picture of what it means, then maybe we could find out. Yeah. You know, it's, I, just, I find language really fascinating. You, know, you say tomato, I say tomato. Well, do we mean the same thing? But then if we draw a picture of a tomato, yeah. then we know what it means. Um, yeah, so how do we connect with the experience of the people? So what does that actually look like? Yeah, you're talking about. I remember, and this was actually at a previous conference that you you, you spoke about how um, there was a misunderstanding about the Jahari window, That's right. and, and about how, uh, if I remember correctly, you'd, you'd assumed that, uh, as I would have done, that it was about the, the sort of the Jahari window. But someone else was was referring had used it as a term for like a slide deck created by someone called Jahari. That's right. Uh, That's so right. so the, these sorts of misunderstandings creep into organisations all all of the time. So so in terms of like. Um, techniques that you think are particularly relevant for the business analysis community, however we define that. What sort of techniques do you think we should be building into our work as a BA uh, that perhaps we don't at the moment, or that we should enhance and use more? So, well, gosh, where do you start? I mean, I think the simplest place to start is to remove your fear of drawing. Yes, it's, well, it, it's funny, isn't it? It's like it, it's like everyone. I, or I, I've worked with people before where the, the idea of visualization is fine as long as it's formal, as long as it's BPMN or it's UML. But the minute you're like, well, no, you can draw anything. They're like, no, that's you know, that's beyond the beyond the pale. How how do any tips for getting beyond that fear of drawing? Because it's like it's almost like there's this fear that someone's going to point at it and say, that's done. Yeah, yeah. I I mean I, I think of the number of times when when I'm with a stakeholder. I'm just drawing out what they're saying. And, and when I look down at what I'm drawing, it's just hideous. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it just doesn't make any sense because I'm drawing like stick people. My, my parents are artists. I've always just had the assumption I can draw something, I can look at something, I can draw accurately. So people assume, therefore, if I'm going to draw something in business, you know, I'm creating like Michelangelo's or something, but that's never the case. Yeah. The meaning is in the conversation. So as you draw something, just literally using stick people, using little boundaries around elements, drawing lines, it doesn't have to be something complex. And I think yeah. people have this fear, you know, when you see live scribes like there are at the conference here, and they're producing beautiful artwork, gosh, that's what it means to be visual. Yeah. And it's just not like that. You know, so I think building up a simple vocabulary for yourself of um, common concepts that you're comfortable with drawing, because it tends to be the same concepts that have come up over and over again. Sort of stakeholders and yeah. these sorts of things. Stakeholders having you know, IT, this is a system, like what? System, as a perfect, you, you and I both oh, have well, so, yeah, no, no, a system, that's a different conversation. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, for one person they're in, that's going to be an IT system. For yeah. another person might be thinking more systemically about the, you know, the overall nature of you know, some organizational, socio-technical system or something. Yeah. What does that word mean? Well, if I just draw a picture of a computer and say this is the system, yeah. I've just disambiguated that for everybody. Yeah. You know, and people think, well, I couldn't draw a computer, but well, how difficult is it? You know, two boxes for a screen. You know, another rectangle underneath it. It's really not that complicated. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever found, because another challenge I think we sometimes face is there's this perception that everything has to become an artifact. Like, there's no point in doing it unless it's going to be, go into a spec 
tech or an artifact or a story or something. And, and in your perspective, uh, like, do you use drawing to communicate? Because if you if you create a drawing with someone, it has meaning for those those individuals. And probably even if you dug it out in a year, it would still have some some meaning. But if you took that to someone who wasn't present, is yeah. it still useful? It's a really interesting question. <laughs> and I, I get into so many conversations, particularly with systems people. So one of the ideas in systems thinking for why you build models, why do you build diagrams, it's not actually about the final artifact, it's about the process. It's not about the diagram, it's about the diagram main. It's yeah. not the model, it's the modeling. I think that's true up to a point. Yeah. <laughs> because I think the techniques for what you do next haven't really been developed yet. So I get frustrated because a lot of the visualization and modeling techniques are extremely meaningful for the people who are in the room producing that model. But then you look at the output and it's it's spaghetti. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's boxes yeah, and lines yeah, and, yeah. and everyone else looks. And like you don't want to look at it. So I think there's a whole new art form, which is largely what our company is, is looking at. There's a whole bunch of new techniques, I think, waiting to be developed to make it easier to take complex systems yeah. and represent them in ways that the people inside the system can understand. Yeah. You know, I mean, a perfect example is Rich Pictures in soft systems methodology, where if you're in the room and you've got a talented artist um, and we're having really good open conversations, we're digging down to what we mean by what we say, and we create this beautiful big metaphorical picture yeah. that makes sense to us, and then you take this picture outside and show it to people, and we've got whatever, you know, race track, we've got, um, yeah, I don't know, yeah, we're on yeah. takeoff, we're all in a big boat race, we're all in a... It just doesn't click with anyone else. It, it's almost it's like the mental models that were present in the room have been made explicit, yes, but then exactly. you, you take that to, a, to someone with a different mental model, and it's like, well, no, a race yeah. car to me means, I don't know, a car crash or something completely different type of thing. So Exactly. And if you've got, you know, a system change affecting 50,000 people. Yeah, yeah. You can't bring 50,000 people through a journey of sense making discovery yeah. over like a week away somewhere, yeah. building if, rich pictures and. If only we could. I mean, that would yeah. just be. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A, um, simulating that. Okay, well, well, well fantastic. That's, that's really, 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 really thought for provoking, Steve. And um, I sense that people that are, that are sort of watching, watching this will probably want to, want to stay in touch and connect with you. <coughs> if people have questions or want to connect, how's the best way for them? Is it LinkedIn or. Um, LinkedIn is good. Um, um, I'm on Twitter sporadically. Um, <laughs> probably the main place, actually, to you want to dig in further to some of the ideas that we're developing is uh, is where we blog. Meaning.guide is our blog, uh, and that tends to be around every few weeks. So meaning.guide. Meaning.guide is the check, URL. Check that, check that out. out. So. Um, fantastic. Well, thanks very much, Steve, for, for your time, and uh, yeah, and I'll we'll catch up again soon. You're welcome.